Good evening, friends. Good evening. Welcome to First Baptist family, uh, family members, and special guests. Uh, special night that you're going to enjoy tonight. I'm Marple Lewis. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, but I just wanted to welcome you here, um, and, and I'm promising you a, a blessing. Uh, our friend Michael Facciani is, has been a friend for a long time and uh, made several stops here at First Baptist along the way. And uh, we're just grateful that this pandemic thing went away for a while at least uh, to bring him back and that we can get back and fellowship and enjoy. And, and you know, uh, I think that you'll find an opportunity tonight to even worship. But he's got a dynamic story that uh, he's, he's going to be sharing along with song. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, if you come with a prepared heart, but I'm going to pray in just a minute. We'll prepare our hearts for the blessing that, that Michael has brought. Uh, I, I said to the morning service, Michael is not an entertainer. He's a minister of encouragement. He thrives to come to places like the First Baptist family here just to bless you, to minister to you. And, and so, you know, uh, the first opportunity we can open up that door. Uh, Michael just feels at home here, and, and I'm going to ask that you help us make him feel at home in just a moment when we welcome up here. Uh, a couple of announcements real quick. Is one thing is, is that we've started to initiate the planning of a bus trip to, if, if you ever heard of Leslie Hale's Teaching Center, uh, also known as the Tabernacle in, in the Wilderness. And it is scheduled for Tuesday, September 14. Elaine Bozak is, is uh, organizing this. Uh, so far, one bus is secured. And so I'm gonna extend it, uh, an invitation to you. If this is something that you're interested in, first come, first serve, until all the seats are, are filled up. She said that the first time it became available this morning, six are already taken, but uh, it is, you know, the full coach, but uh, we're gonna involve uh, the invitation to a number of people. So uh, you'll learn a lot, but it will be a great time of fellowship. The details, or more details, are on a flyer that looks like this at the Connection Center, so you may want to stop by and get in touch with Elaine very soon if, uh, if you're interested in that. Read this over, and then you'll have all that information. Um, tonight, immediately following, we've got an ice cream social. And so, you know, there's three exit doors to, uh, to, to leave this place. But the one I want to encourage you to take is that one, okay? Uh, it would be a great opportunity just to kind of dig in to some of that sweetness, share it with a friend, smile with somebody. If you've been blessed tonight, then just be mindful to be a blessing. Uh, one of the blessings that I have received and Several years ago, Michael was our special guest here, and a, a, a woman read about it in uh, the newspaper or something like that, came to be entertained by his gifts and talent, found herself comfortable at this place, stuck around a little bit, invited Jesus into her heart, was saved and baptized, and I'm talking about my dear friend, my girlfriend, Judy Brown. And, amen. And this is Judy's first time back since the pandemic shut down. And so, uh, our dear friend, we welcome you back. And so glad that this could be the event that you're able uh, to make. And so, uh, that, you know, that's exciting. That's just uh, and, 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 I'm, and I'm grateful for, for that blessing. If you are blessed by being here tonight in the program that, that Michael has already taken around the country and blessed many other people, uh, I want to ask you to be a blessing to him because when Michael comes, he says, um, 
you know, if I walk away with no financial assistance for even the expenses, he trusts in Jesus. But, you know, if, if you would be a blessing to him, at the end of our uh, program tonight, I'm going to station a man with a plate at either one of those doors and just ask if you would bless him with a gift of thanks for coming from Iowa to Florida to be a blessing to you. So uh, I, I mentioned it earlier for y'all who were coming in for tonight. Uh, maybe, maybe you didn't expect that, but if you have that opportunity to be a blessing, uh, please give him a gift and, uh, and we send him off to the next place of, of, of ministry, certainly showing our uh, gratefulness, our appreciation. And uh, ten, over 10 years, now in his 11th year, and Michael has exceeded over 70,000 miles on his car. 700, I, yes, I almost said that. Seven, over 700,000 miles in that uh, time. Thanks for the correction on that. That's a big difference, right? Like about 10 times, but, um, and, and some of those places that he visits over the 10 years is repeat. Sometimes the people just can't wait for him to come back again. So I'm grateful that you were here. Let me pray, and then we'll invite you up here, Michael. Father, I just uh, thank you for the gathering that is here tonight. Lord, I recognize is that uh, you have brought to us someone that you have gifted, and not only gifted, but called into the ministry with a musical uh, gift, but a heart to serve you by serving others. That, Lord, that the message is, is heartfelt, heart-delivered, to exalt and to honor you. And in the meantime, the blessings on us just spill over. I pray that you protect him tonight as a soldier for the glory of God against any spiritual attacks, but which includes uh, the protection of his voice. For each and every one of us, Lord, I ask that you open up our heart to receive that I know that we will truly be entertained by, by the gifts, but to be open to the message that you want to send to us through your servant, Michael. And that, Lord, that this will be a special night. Even in the time that we share ice cream, it won't be a frivolous time, but to, a time to laugh with one another, to enjoy the fellowship that we've had with many that we haven't seen in a long time, or those people that we might even meet for the first time tonight. Lord, I pray that it is a celebration of what we experience here tonight. First, to celebrate Jesus and to celebrate his love amongst each other. We love and adore you, Lord God. We thank you for this privilege to assemble here tonight. And so, Lord, uh, May you be blessed as well by us gathering here tonight. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, amen. Would you please welcome Michael Facciano. I'm going to take just a couple moments and share a little, I don't know if you call it a commercial or not, because I didn't want my program to be interrupted. So, But first of all, thank you, Pastor Marple, Miss Judy, for having me. Longtime friends before I even started traveling as a music evangelist, as they call me in the Southern Baptist Church anyway, back in June of 2011, had a couple pastors say, hey, if you're in the area, let us know. I called a couple, they had me, and I've been traveling ever since. And so... Uh, yeah, by the time, I'm in the middle of a 10,000 mile run in 30 days here, and by the time I finish that 10,000 mile run, I think I'll be close to, I'll be pressing towards 725,000 ground miles, and I do brag about those because I feel like I'm bragging about God's encouragement that has come through his people. Not just people like you, but many of you right here, 
And so I brag about those miles to give him the glory for that. So thank you. And I've come to the place, like I mentioned in the service this morning, now I now blame you for being out there for so many miles because you've encouraged me. But I came to encourage you this evening. And I am thrilled with so many people here. I'll sit down and have lunches as often as I can to encourage one at a time on their story and to continue telling your story of faith for the glory of God. So to gather this many together in an evening is just going to be wonderful tonight. I did want to mention quickly, if some of you uh, work out in the workforce during the day, but 11 o'clock tomorrow over in the fellowship hall, I'm going to present a program called the Faith and Family Manifesto to teach you an opportunity to record your story of faith and leave it to your posterity. Some of you have kids, grandkids. Some of you have great grandkids. How many have great grandkids out there? Some of you, okay, some of you do. Um, I'm going to share some things over here that my friends here at First Baptist Beverly Hills have never heard. Some of them are a little shocking. And I'll tell you, and I'll be very vulnerable with you as to why I started this program. There's no charge on it. Uh, the, the workshop normally takes three hours, but we're going to do like just a one-hour challenge. And I'll leave you with a workbook and a CD that has four lessons on it, okay? Free of charge. You'll be able to take that with you. So if you can, uh, consider doing that. I do have uh, some CDs. I give them away for a donation of any amount. If it's tight for you and, and you can't afford it, I want you to take one as a gift. If you have the money and you just don't have it with you, take the CD, take an envelope and send it back. Uh, some people do five for a CD, some do 10 or more. I have had five do $500 for a CD. You are welcome to be the sixth here this evening. <laughs> That is a true story, though. But I just trust God on that. Now, here's one other thing. I started this program and rolled it out in February of 2019. 20, February of 2020. Uh, first in Mobile, Alabama, then Pensacola. And then, of course, the pandemic hit, right, in, in March when the country was shut down. I got a little frustrated with that, that I couldn't get around and share this program. Since then, I've shared it many times. So we took a live recording that was done in Pensacola. We remixed it, and I added some narrated stories, and I've given hundreds and hundreds and hundreds away at no charge. I don't have them at my CD table, but I do have an opportunity. If you give me your address, I will send that back with a personalized encouragement to you. I am trying to capture some addresses because as long as I have breath and the money to send the postage, from time to time, you would get a little postcard or something saying, thank you for your story and encouraging you uh, to, to share it. And what I found out uh, about this program is I didn't expect it to resonate like it has. And I think you'll understand what I mean when I get started here in just a moment. So thank you for allowing me to come. Well, when I can, and we have a capable audiovisual department, which we do tonight here at the church and through Elaine, I like to take a little two-minute promo, a time for you to see a two-minute promo for this program. I think some of you from the church have seen it. But this will introduce the program, and then I'll go right into it, and then I won't have to give any commercials in there. So once again, thank you for coming. Thank you for your story. Tonight, I'm going to be thanking many of you personally because I've been collecting some names if I don't personally thank you from here, know that your story is appreciated by me and other people here and those that hear your story and learn about our glorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, uh, Elaine, go ahead. <laughs> I recognize them, even though I hadn't seen them in a while. My walking shoes as a toddler. As I picked them up, I realized my parents probably did all they could to raise me and my two brothers. I don't know everything about my parents' story, but I'm sure it wasn't always easy. Through God's providence, they gave me life. And in my ministry travels, I frequently have opportunities to thank them. I included in my promotional piece an old radio. My father-in-law listened to it. With most of my career story spent in radio, I was touched when I remembered his story. Now, 10 years in heaven, we have the memories of Clayton's life 
as it was miraculously saved by the Lord Jesus. From traveling as a guitar player, in the honky-tonks, as he would say, away from God as a drunk, his story took a turn for the better when he met the Lord Jesus Christ. I've come to realize that some of the most powerful stories I hear on the road contain chapters filled with difficult times. I'll be sharing some pretty powerful songs and rekindling memories, hopefully inspiring you to tell your story for the glory of God. And so, what is your story? Coming up on 700,000 ground miles of travel in my 10th year now, it's time. It's time to say thank you for your story. shame. I know there's some chapters of shame in my storybook. But I believe that if you will allow God to take especially those chapters in your life that are filled with valleys, deep valleys of hurt and pain and things that maybe you've never even shared with your closest friend or your spouse. Maybe you've never even had a conversation with your God about some of those chapters. He knows those chapters. He knows those chapters in your life. And if you will be vulnerable, not just tonight, as maybe we page through your storybook and no one, of course, is going to embarrass you here. But if you'll be vulnerable out there in the world for his cause, he will take those chapters of hurt and pain and use them for his glory. And so tonight I'm going to ask you to open up your storybook. You know, you don't have to be honest with God. He already knows, right? We can be honest with ourselves a little bit and say, hey, I'm going to take ownership. And I encourage you to embrace your past and redeem it and allow God to take those things even the difficult things and use them for his glory well I sang a couple of my favorite songs this morning so I'm going to do one here that I haven't done in a while you'll probably know it so maybe you can know it how many remember Andre Crouch you know who that was yeah I'll tell you what I miss Andre Crouch especially in these days now, but I'm going to sing uh, one of his most famous songs. You know the chorus, so maybe you can help me out with this one. We'll sing a couple songs here, and I'll tell you a couple stories, and we'll talk about your story as well. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved Yet you gave To prove your love for me The voices Of a million angels Could not express My gratitude All that I am Never hope to be. I owe it all to thee. Sing it out with me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things. Blood. 
just let me live my life and let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I give any praise, let it go to Calvary. Sing it with me.
Well, we explained the radio that my father-in-law used to listen to in my walking shoes. There's a microphone there that's important to me. It's an expensive one. My partners helped me purchase it. I purchased it from, his name is Jeff. He was a recording, he had a recording studio just a block and a half away from my home. Probably most of half of the songs on my CDs were recorded by Jeff. About 14 years ago, he had a stroke. He's still alive. I stop over to see him from time to time. He's pretty much confined to his bed. But he remembers me and I remember him. Bought the microphone. They gave me six months to pay for it. <laughs> we were able to pay it off. But you know, early in his life, in the 60s, he traveled with a group called the Imperials. Some of you know the Imperials. In the 60s, they were called the Imperials Quartet. And they opened up for a semi-famous person, uh, Elvis Presley. I'm sure no one's heard of them. But they would travel with Elvis Presley, the Imperials, and my friend Jeff would play the bass guitar. And from time to time, uh, Elvis's band wasn't with him or the bass guitarist wasn't present. And so my friend Jeff many times was on stage playing for Elvis Presley. What do you think of that story? I think that's pretty cool. But I always appreciate Jeff and I appreciate his story. They did a fundraiser, like a, what do you call those, uh, those little auctions they do, the silent auction, packed, the gym was packed. He had, he had touched so many lives and discovered lots of different people that became nationally known singing artists. But people prayed and continue to pray for him all over the world. And here's the neat thing about Jeff's story. It continues. Continues to touch lives. If you've got breath to breathe and you were able to come here tonight, which you are, your story certainly can continue to live on. It's George and Lena, right? George, thank you for your story. It's important, it matters, it needs to be told. Lena, thank you for your story. It's important, it matters, it needs to be told. I'm trying to remember what song I was gonna do next. I'm gonna find out in just about a second here. Here we go. This song I believe is gonna come true for all of us. I do, in some form or fashion. If you know Christ as, you, as your Savior, you're going to find out, if you know Him, that you're going to probably have touched more lives than you know. Listen to this one. I dreamed I went to heaven And you were there with me We walked upon the streets of gold Beside the crystal sea We heard the angels singing And someone called your name You turned and saw this young man And he was smiling as he came And he said, friend You may not know me now Then he said, but wait you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. And every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. One day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Thank you for giving to Yeah. 
other man stood before you and said, remember the time a missionary came to your church and his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. Somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you have done and sacrifices made. Unnoticed on the earth, but in heaven now proclaimed. And I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry. But I was almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand as you stood before the Lord. He said, my child, look around you, for great is your reward. Thank you forgiving to the Lord. I am the life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so continues to use each one and every one of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Bob, thank you for your story. Your story is important. It matters. It needs to be told. Where's Miss Vicki back there? Vicki, thank you for your story. Important. It matters. It needs to be told. It's Luli right there, right? Luli, thank you for your story. It's important. It matters. It needs to be told. Thank you for coming tonight. Over to my right, I'm in front of my fireplace there at home. To my right is the dining room, and off of that is a room that we made into a bedroom. I call it hallowed ground. Because that's where my mother-in-law laid for a year when we cared for her through hospice. My wife's with her right now. The hospice people have said that she's got days 
or just weeks to live. She turned 93 a number of weeks ago, May 28th. She was part of a family that had a great heritage of preachers and prayer warriors from Ohio. And me and her were friends, confidants. She backed me when no one else would. I had preachers. I had brethren leave my life because of some mistakes I made, even being married to her daughter. She stuck with me, Jim, when other people deserted me. So her story and her storybook includes me. My storybook includes her. Storybook with a number of chapters of heartache in it. She got to the place where my wife could no longer care for her. And on March 17th, and you remember that date, 2020, the day after the pandemic lockdown started, through a miracle, we were able to get her admitted under Medicaid into the nicest and best facility in town. My wife debated on whether or not to put her in because we knew we wouldn't see her to who knows how long. Some of you haven't seen loved ones since the pandemic began. I helped load her into the van, the medical van, and took her over and I wheeled her out. I was the one that wheeled her into the facility, not knowing when we were going to see her again. Having severe dementia, she didn't understand FaceTiming and video conferencing very well. But you would think that her powerful prayer ministry and her heart for God were over. But you'd be wrong. Within hours, we got multiple reports from the long-term care facility that Esther was going from person to person and staff member to staff member, telling them that she loved them and that God loved them. If Esther, my dear and loving mother in love, her ministry isn't over, yours isn't either. And so as you page through your storybook, you remember Esther. Do it for me if you would. And when we start feeling sorry for ourselves, and I do it more than anybody, remember Esther. I had her on the phone before we left Pastor Marple's house. My wife gave the phone. And I could hear encouragement in her voice. I didn't understand every word. But I told her I was getting ready for a program, and I heard her mouth words of encouragement that were powerful to me. Her story matters. It's important. And I'll be telling it for her when she can no longer tell it. Jim, thank you for your story. Your story is important and matters, and you've told some of it to me, and it needs to continue to be told. Thank you for it. There are times when we don't know how we're going to go on. How many have ever been there before? I don't care how young you are. I know we got some young people here tonight. You wonder how in the world we're going to go on. Even knowing Christ sometimes. How many besides me have had trouble before trusting in a difficult time? Now that's recorded in the storybook. We may try to hide it from others. We may think we're hiding it from God, but we're not. He knows. You see, he knows. And he's with you. And he said that he would never leave you nor forsake you. But it's those times, according to Hebrews 6.19, that our hope is an anchor of our soul. And in your storybook, I hope there's a big picture of an anchor reminding you of our faith and our hope in our Lord Jesus Christ.
watching me. Sing it with me if you want. The anchor holds, though the ship is battered. The anchor holds, though the sails are torn. The raging seas, the anchor holds. In spite of the storm, I've had visions.
got some young people here tonight. That was pretty cool. Courtney, right? Thank you for your story. Yeah, your story is just beginning. But if the Lord tarries, Pastor Marple and Miss Judy, I think she's going to end up with quite a storybook. Going into nursing, you'll never be without a job. But I believe that your job will go much further than that with your heart. I pray for great, powerful chapters in your story. Thank you. Jeff, I just met you this morning, but thank you for your story. Your story is just getting underway, too. If the Lord tarries, I believe it's going to be quite a storybook. And you know, I believe that if we have that one chapter, each and every one of us, that includes the acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And I'm glad that on April 1st, 1977, someone was kind enough to me and cared enough about me to let me know that God loved me. He would save me. And so I had a chapter in there. It was a glorious chapter in my storybook. But there have been lots of hurtful ones. Lots of chapters filled with gloom and shame. I have a Christmas DVD that we made available and I have some people that graciously donate all my video work. I'm with a legendary uh, piano player right there. He's in the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. Some people from Pensacola drove all the way up to the Pittsburgh area to shoot some video at a Christmas show. And the video was just sitting there and my friend Pat said, we need to make a DVD. And I said, I don't have time for a DVD. But through further harassment in my life, she said, we need to do that DVD. So down in Pensacola, we had a very nice Southern Baptist lady, very well off. Those two chairs right there are leather chairs and they're baby blue. And Jeff loves it because he's from Kentucky, the Kentucky Wildcats. So we did 12 outtakes and went in and out of the theater. I got a long letter from Bonnie, whose beautiful living room we used as the studio set, that while we were there, Jeff and I put on a show, a concert, and we sang a song. It's an international song, Frank. Where is Frank? International song. There's your cue now. You better know this song. You let me know after. Thank you for your story, too, by the way. Your story is important. It matters. It needs to be told. Bonnie wrote me a long letter and said, when you and Jeff sang the song that I'm going to sing, my whole life I was afraid to be alone, even though she knew Christ as her Savior. She said she lost her son. Her son passed away. Her husband left her. And then her wonderful sister brunette that I knew had cancer, and she exited Bonnie's life as well. And she was afraid, and her worst nightmares had come upon her. But when we sang this song, she said, and that fear went away. And Bonnie's a little chapter in my storybook where God somehow chose to use little old me when I never thought he would use me again. For some of you in here, particularly men, you think God can't use you anymore. If you're honest, sometimes you come to church because you're actually hiding out because your wife wants you to come. It's the thing to do, so you come and you put your time in. I've done that, so I'm not criti don't take that as a criticism. I was a chief. I, I did that. But here's your encouragement. God still has a tremendous plan for your life. Chapters still to be written. And so we did this song that night. And Bonnie says she's no longer afraid of being alone. Oh 
Seven flood that I was in that killed my first cousin, her husband, nine members of his family, two friends from church. So I had a connection to 13 of the 86 victims of that flood, but not far from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where I was born and raised, is a little city. You'd have to look it up to know where it's at, but it's called Cannonsburg. It's a very famous city. There were a couple great musical artists known all over the world from there, which is a little weird from a little town that side, that size. One that sang a lot in the 40s and 50s especially, you might not know him, but it was, let's see, Perry Como was one. Oh, you have heard of Perry Como. Another one, one of the stories on my CD is of Johnny and Annetta's story, a close friend. I was with her and her family when she entered heaven, March 1st, a little more than four uh, months ago. So if you listen to the story on the CD that I'd be glad to mail to you, and that is in heaven. And that had a picture with this great artist, and the story goes that she never washed her face after that, decades later. Bobby Fenton was also from Cannonsburg. But that's not why the city's famous in my book. There's a story book that was written about someone that they affectionately called the Batman. He was laid in a hospital for almost two years, near death the whole time. His wife's name is Cheryl, that story is also on there. He died about eight days after Annetta did. So Johnny and Annetta, Annetta's no with us, no, no longer with us, Johnny and Cheryl, their story. When Johnny went into the Pittsburgh hospital, he literally wore a Batman costume. He became famous in that Pittsburgh hospital for two years. Somehow he hung on until he was gonna be there until the Lord was done with the eternal pen writing his story. And his earthly story ended March 9th. And 
I have pictures, normally it's a little morbid to take pictures of someone in a casket, but of course he was dressed in his Batman costume. And his story lives. His storybook is still being told. His storybook is being pulled off the shelves to this day and will for the future because I'll tell it every story I get. And your storybook as well will be pulled off God's great library. And people will read your story and they'll be inspired with it if you allow God to finish your story with what I like to call his eternal pen. And so thank you for your stories here tonight. Thank you, especially if that story includes making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. And while I'm at it, um, Lee and Elaine, thank you for your stories. They're important. They matter. And they need to be told. And God is writing a powerful, powerful storybook through both of you. So thank you for that. Um, there's someone here that uh, is very special to me, and I'm glad she made it somehow. And Pastor Markle has already mentioned her. <laughs> I have a very famous evangelist uh, from the Atlanta area that I got to meet. And I told him, I said, I sometimes use Dean Martin songs to lead people to Christ. And publicly in front of me, he said, Mike even says that God could use Dean Martin songs to reach people. Judy is my proof of that. You don't realize what a great day this is for me. My dad encouraged me to sing the old love songs that he and my mom grew up with. Dad's 89 today. He's in long-term care too. He was with my mom. He bugged me from 2012 until 2014. He said, you need to sing the old love songs that me and your mom grew up with. I said, Dad, I can't do that. I'm a gospel singer. So for two years, he bugged me and bugged me and bugged me. He said, Dad, you know what? I tell you what, I'm going to learn some songs and I'm going to sing them for you and Mom. He said, no, no, we're going to rent a theater. You're going to dress up in a tuxedo and you're going to charge tickets. I said, is that right, Dad? And that's true, true story. So I'll never forget when Mom called the nice Pascarella Performing Arts Center in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. It cost millions and millions to build. I thought, oh, dear Lord, Mom, don't call them. They rented it. I said, you know what? I'll dress up in the tuxedo and I'll sing the songs. And you and Mom will be there and maybe my two brothers and maybe a couple other people that I pay to sit there. That night, 400 people showed up. I've taken and done this program all across the country. One of the greatest examples of doing this program was, was as an outreach was right here, First Baptist Church, Beverly Hills. Because I would have a little faith emphasis in there and we used it just to have people come and visit and just love them. And you did a magnificent job that day. God worked through you and there was a great chapter written in your storybook. Pastor Marple and Miss uh, Judy and, and those of you that helped and somehow this Miss Judy came and as the story goes she came back and was introduced to Jesus Christ came back again and was baptized if I'm told the story right and so um, I wanted to do something a little different here tonight if we can because she needs some encouragement this is the first time she's been here like Pastor Marple said I think in almost a year and a half or a year and three months whatever it is but uh, I want you to do something. Judy, um, thank you for your story. Your story is an important one to me, for sure. It matters. It needs to be told. And I'm wondering if we can encourage her, and if you can, to stand and give her a big hand to encourage her in her faith and in her health right now. So give her a big hand. Thank you for your story, Judy. Thank you. And don't leave without a picture, because I'm going to get the picture, and I'm going to send it to Steve Hale over in Atlanta, this big, famous evangelist. And now, here's a lady right here that was reached by a Dean Martin song. <laughs> I'm not going to sing a Dean Martin song here, but I didn't realize that my storybook was going to include these old love songs. And I got to thinking, love songs, gee, 
The Bible talks about love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We are to love. It's a commandment he gave us is to love. And the Bible even says, goes as far to say that God is love. And so I don't apologize for these songs anymore. But I wanted to do one of my favorite ones here. All of we singers like to believe we have a signature song. Like one that we sing better than anybody else. Now, unfortunately, every great singer that ever walked the planet sang this song. But no one, in my opinion, ever came close to singing it as well as it was sung in 1972 on the Gomer Pyle Show when Jim Neighbor sang this song. See if you remember this old one. To dream the impossible dream To fight the unbeatable foe To bear with unbearable sorrow To run where the brave dare not go To right the unrightable wrong to love your end chased from afar To try when your arms are too weary To reach the unreachable star This is my quest to follow that star Without question or pose, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I lay to my rest. Then the world will be better for this That one man, scorned and covered with scars Still strove with his last ounce of courage To fight the unbeatable foe To reach the unreachable Sometimes pastors' wives' stories go, unfortunately, untold. 
but not here, not tonight, not in Beverly Hills, Florida. Your story is important, it matters, and it needs to be told. Thank you. Thank you for all your stories, and I don't know all of your names, but for all of you, thank you for your stories. Keep allowing that story to be written. Now in the United States, back in the early 50s, we had just come out of World War II and the country was weary. Headlong into the Korean conflict, into the early 50s, and my dad was there for the last 17 months of the Korean War. Not many will remember, typically people from the Northeast will remember a television program, and if you're old enough, called the Jane Froman Show. Anyone here remember the Jane Froman Show? Everyone's also with, we have one hand right there. She said the country is weary. We were victorious in World War II, but a little worn out. How many have been a little victorious, but you're just, you're just worn out? She said a, a, a song needs to be written. I had this song on my bucket list for four years. Oh, I'll sing it, I'll sing it someday, until I learn the story behind it. And sometimes the story behind a song is greater than the song itself. I don't think it's quite greater than this song. All of you will know the song. Maybe, maybe young people might not have heard it, but we'll see. All over the country, people tell me these, this was the theme song to their high school, uh, for their high school class. And four people ended up writing this great song. When I found out the story, I began singing it, singing it that night. It's the only song they say that went straight to number one, first being on television. I've talked to two people that watched Frankie Lane in person as he was taking this song to number one. And so we'll see tonight if you know this great song, and I think you will, and if you are going through a tough time in your life, where you're just, you're just flat. You're worn out. The Bible says when, when we are weak, he's strong. And I've been through it too. And not to condemn any of you for that, but through this song, maybe receive some refreshing and add a story and a chapter to your storybook. I believe for every God of rain falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone that goes astray, someone will come.
close now with, with an encouragement. So what is your story? As I travel the country, I know I speak to people that have chapters in their storybook that are either difficult or sometimes that they're ashamed of. I know that feeling. But there's something that you need to know and I need to know, and it's self-evident, really. Your story is the only one you have. And tonight, I encourage you to embrace your story and your past, especially the parts that hurt you. Because if you will dare to be vulnerable and transparent, there's a hurting world out there that will identify with you. And I want to encourage you to quit trying on your own. We can strive and we can try to do and we can try to better our lives. But that's just in the flesh. Only if we allow His Holy Spirit to live and abide in us and give us the strength can our storybook have supernatural meaning. And your storybook will be one that's just not a mortal one. But you, to somebody out there, will turn into a super heroic story. Where someone will say, if that person can do it, if Pastor Marvel can do it, if Jim, if Frank, if George, if Bob, if Lee, if some of you others, if you can do it, I can believe God can touch my life. I encourage you to give that eternal pen back to the Heavenly Father. Let and allow Him to write the rest of your beautiful story. Because if your story contains those chapters that hurt and are shameful, how beautiful will your story be? I dare you I dare you to allow your story to be told and love people through your story. Here's how you can begin it. If you ever want to reach out to somebody in the name of our God, just ask them, what's your story? And listen to their story and learn from it. And you'll find a place to plug yours in and touch them. And I believe that God will take lives that husbands, wives, parents, grandparents think are impossible situations for their loved ones. And God will use your story to touch them. You've got a pastor and his wife here that will encourage you to use and finish compiling your story to use for His glory to touch people right here in this community. So I want to end with this. First Baptist Church, Beverly Hills, long live you, and thank you.